Let's talk about sequences today. So, a sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. So we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So for example, the function f of n equals one over n, if I were to graph that, um, it would start out as, uh, I plug in one and I'd get one over one is one. And I plug in two, I'd get one over two is one half, one over three is a third, one over four is a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and so on. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. Now, these are not continuous functions. I can't go any further, I can't do one divided by zero because that's infinity, it's undefined, it doesn't work, so um, that's as much as I can graph on that. So we're gonna write down the first six terms of the sequence a sub n equals n minus one. So we write that like this. a sub one is the first term of the sequence, so I would plug in one here, and that'd be one minus one would be zero divided by one, which would be zero. a sub two, I would plug in two, so that'd be two minus one would be one over two. a sub three, would be um, uh, three minus one would be two divided by three, which would be three. A sub four would be four minus one would be three divided by four. A sub five would be five minus one would be four divided by five. And A sub six, I'm sure you can see the pattern by now is gonna be five six. Okay, so there's my solution, there's my first six terms. All right, let's look at this one right down the first six terms. Now this one's a little different. B sub n is negative one to the n plus one power uh, times two over n. So this one's gonna uh, alternate between positive and negative. So a sub one, if I plug in one, this is gonna be one plus one or two, this is gonna be positive one times two over one is two. A sub two, this would be two plus one would be three. So this is gonna be negative one times uh, two over two. So that's gonna be uh, negative one times one. It's gonna be negative one. A sub three, so all the odd ones are gonna be positive. So this is gonna be uh, two divided by three. All the even numbered ones are gonna be negative. So this is gonna be two over four is gonna be one half. A sub five is gonna be two fifths. And you can crank these out pretty quick once you kind of see the pattern. This is gonna be negative uh, two sixths would be one third. Okay, so there's my first six terms of that sequence. All right, write down the first six terms of the sequence C sub n is n if n is even and one over n if n is odd. All right, so c sub one. Well, that's odd, so that's one over one, which is one. c sub two, that's even, so that's just gonna be two. c sub three, that's odd, that's gonna be one over three. c sub four, uh, a sub four, c sub four. That's uh, even, so that's just gonna be four. C sub five is gonna be one over five. And C sub six is gonna be six. Factorial symbol. Okay, so if N is greater than or equal to zero and that's an, is an integer, the factorial symbol N, this is read N factorial, is defined as follows. Zero factorial, that's not just an excited zero right there, that's zero factorial, that's defined to be one. One factorial is also one, and then n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two times dot 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 three times two times one, if n is greater than or equal to two. So basically it's just all the numbers multiplied together below that number. So if I find six factorial, six factorial is six times five times four times three times two times one, 
which is 30, 120, uh, that's 720. Now, I would personally like to get my bank account to grow factorially uh, because it grows very fast. Now, you can find the factorial key if you want to do this on your calculator. You push 6, and then you push your math key, which is right up here in the upper left-hand corner. And let's see, you arrow uh, clear over to the right where it says PRB, probability. It's number 4. Hit 4. That gives you 6 factorial. You hit enter, and it's 720. Okay, so here's a theorem, n factorial is just n times n minus 1 factorial. So basically what that means is 5 factorial is just 5 times 4 factorial. And of course 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial. And so on, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2 times 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1 times 0 factorial. So, uh, pretty simple. Summation notation. This is something you might not have seen before. It's often important to be able to find the sum of the first n terms of a sequence a sub n. That is, find a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub n. That dot 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 just means there's a bunch of stuff in between there. To simplify this process, we use summation notation. So a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub n equals, you read this as the sum, this is a Greek sigma right here, capital S, the sum from k equals 1 to n of the a sub k's. So what that means is the k's go 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n, n's whatever this number is, and then you add up all those numbers. All right, so write out the sum, uh, the sum of k equals 1 to n of the 1 over k's. All right, so this is going to be 1 plus uh, 1 half plus 1 third plus dot, 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 plus the final one is going to be 1 over n. And you're done. You can't do any more than that. Now down here, we're going to write out the sum as k equals 1 to n of the k factorials. Okay, so we've got 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial would be 2 times 3 would be 6, 4 factorial would be uh, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, so that's going to be 24, plus dot dot dot, plus n factorial. So these don't have an end, so you just got to leave a variable in there at the end. You need to do enough of these that you can establish what the pattern is. All right, express the sum using summation notation. So I got 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared up to 9 squared. All right, so this is going to be the sum from k equals 1 to 9 of the um, k squareds. So this is the number that's changing. This is going to be my k. It's going to go from 1 to 9. All right, this one doesn't have an end because it's got a variable on the end. So this is going to be the sum. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, this is going to be 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4. Okay, so this is going to be um, actually, I'm going to look at this as 2 to the first power. i got to rewrite this a little bit. This is going to be 1 over 2 to the 0 power, plus 1 over 2 to the 1st power, plus 1 over 2 to the 2nd power, plus 1 over 2 to the 3rd power, plus dot dot dot, plus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so there's a couple ways I can write this. I just need to make sure my first term is correct. So it's going to be the sum, and it's going to be... Um, 1 over 2 to the k power, and this one I'm going to start at 0, and I'm going to end at, um, uh, I'm going to end at n minus 1. 
So my first one would be 1 over 2 to the 0 power. My second one would be 1 over 2 to the first power. And then my last one is going to be 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 power. So there you go. I could write this also. I could write this another way. I could do k equals 1 to n if this is 1 over 2 to the k minus 1 power, like that. That would give me the same thing. Okay, properties of sequences. So if a sub n and b sub n are two sequences and c is a real number, then the sum from k equals 1 to n of the c's is just c plus c plus c plus c plus dot 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 plus c n times, which means it's just c times n. Now I'm going to give you a formula sheet that you can use. It's got these formulas on it. You need to know some of these, though. That would be one that you should know. All right, here's the next one. Uh, Oh, so by the way, let's, let's do one here. So if I had uh, the sum from k equals 1 to 6 of the 4s, that would just be 6 times 4 would be 24. That would be an example. Okay, uh, the sum from k equals 1 to n of the c times a sub k. So i got a constant in here. So that would just be c times a sub 1 plus c times a sub 2 plus da 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 plus c times a times sub n. All those terms have a C in it, so I can factor the C out, and then it's just A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus dot 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 A sub N in the, in the inside. So basically what that lets me do is if I have a constant here, I can take that constant and put it out here and just do the sum of the other stuff. So for example, if I had uh, something like this, the sum from K equals 1 to 10 of the 3 Ks. All right, that's the same thing as just finding three times the sum from k equals 1 to 10 of the k's. And we'll have a formula for that in just a minute. Uh, so more on that later. So I can just do this part first and then just take the answer and multiply it by 3. The sum from k equals 1 to n of the a sub k's plus b sub k's, I can break that apart and do the sum of this and do the sum of this and then just add those together. All right, so if I had, for example, the sum from k equals 1 to n of the uh, 3k plus 2s, I could break this apart, and I could make this uh, the sum from k equals 1 to n of the 3k's plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of the 2s. And then this would be 2n, and this I could factor the 3 actually out here, figure out what the sum of the k's would be, and multiply it by 3. Uh, same thing with minus, it works the same way. Just subtract them, that's the only difference. This is kind of a weird one, we don't use this one very often, but basically what this says is, the sum from k equals 1 to n of the a sub k's is the sum from k equals 1 to j of the a sub k's plus the, uh, the sum from k equals j plus 1 to n of the a sub k's, where j is somewhere between 0 and n. So what that means is um, I could stop in the middle and then just continue on at some point. So, for example, if I wanted you know, the sum from k equals 1 to 250 of the k's, well, I could find the sum from k equals 1 to 100 of the k's, and I could add that to the sum from k equals 101 to 250 of the k's, and I would get the same answer. All right, this is a formula you definitely need to know right here. The sum from k equals 1 to n of the k's, that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n. That's equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. All right, you need to know that formula. Um, and, you know, you can amaze freshmen in the lunchroom with this kind of stuff because you can do things like this. Hey, find the sum from k equals 1 to uh, 485 of the k's. Oh, well, let's see, I can do that in about two seconds. I don't have to add up all those numbers. 
that's just going to be 485 times 486 divided by 2. And uh, 485 times 486 divided by 2, that's uh, 117,855. And I'm done. Okay, it takes no time. It's no harder to do this than it is to do the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of the k's. All right, here's the formula uh, for the k squared. So that's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus dot, dot, dot plus n squared. The formula is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So let's say we had the sum from k equals 1 to uh, 15 of the k squareds. So that would be 15 times 16 times 2 times 15 is 31 plus 1 is 31 over 6. So 15 times 16 times 31 divided by 6 comes out to 1240. And that's super simple. Here's another one that's easy. This is actually easier than the previous one because it's easier to remember. This is just uh, the k cubes. It's just the sum of the k's squared. Okay, this is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. This is n times n plus 1 divided by 2 squared. So if I want 1 plus 8 plus 27 plus dot 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 n to the third power, um, I could do, say, the sum from k equals 1 to 20 of the k cubes, well that's going to be 20 times 21 divided by 2 squared. So that's, uh, what, 420 divided by 2 is 210, I think. Yeah, 210 squared. That's 44,100. And there's formulas for k to the 4th, k to the 5th, k to the 6th, but I don't do those on here, but they're on your formula sheet. So find the sum of each sequence, the sum from k equals 1 to 5 of the 3 k's. All right, so this would be one that I would, uh, I would pull out the 3. Okay, and then this is going to be 3 times uh, 5 times 6 divided by 2. So that's 30 divided by 2 is 15, and that's going to be 45. All right, you can check that. So the first one would be 3, the second one would be 6, the third one would be 9, the fourth one would be 12, and the fifth one would be 15, and that would be 27, 36, 42, 45. So you can confirm it. Okay, now, is it probably easier to do this for this one? Yeah, but on the test, guess what? This is going to be 500 instead of 5. So, uh, you're going to want to know the formulas. Okay, uh, find the sum from k equals 1 to 3 of the k cubed plus 1s. All right, so, again, I could plug these numbers in. There's only three of them. I could do that. The first one would be uh, 1 cubed would be 1 plus 1 would be 2. The second one would be 2 cubed would be 8 plus 1 is 9. 3 cubed would be uh, 27 plus 1 is 28. So it's 37. I should get 39 when I do this. So this is going to be equal to the sum from k equals 1 to 3 of the k cubes plus the sum k equals 1 to 3 of the 1s. Okay, well this is going to be uh, 3 times 4 divided by 2 squared. That's going to be this part right here. And then this part is going to be 3 times 1. So this is 12, 6, squared is 36, plus 3 is 39. And I win. All right, find the sum from k equals 1 to 4, the k squared minus 7k's plus 2's. This might be a good one for you to pause and see if you can do this one on your own, and then jump back on here and see if you got it right. 
Okay, so this one, I would break this up. This is the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of the k squares. Uh, minus 7 times the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of the k's plus the sum from k equals 1 to 4 of the 2's. Okay, so this one is the formula I never remember off the top of my head. It's like 4 times 5 times 2n plus 1, so that would be times 9, divided by 6. Hopefully I got that right. Minus 7 times, the sum of the k's would be 4 times 5 divided by 2. Plus, this is just 4 times 2. So, uh, 45 times 4, that's 90, 180 divided by 6, that's 30. Minus 7 times uh, 10, 20 divided by 2 is 10, uh, plus 8. So 30 minus 70 would be negative 40, uh, that's going to be uh, negative 32. Okay, and here's your assignment. So on these, I've got uh, worksheets attached. These, you need to do all these problems. Okay, and then turn those in. And there you go. So just, uh, you know, these are easy to write down the problems and send it back to me or you can print out this page, whatever floats your boat. I'll put, the, uh, I'll put a copy of the worksheet on Google Classroom. So have a great day.